Hello McIntyre's Football Fan TV, this is the Stat 11 show, England versus the Republic of Ireland, Wembley Stadium. So, Ireland are obviously without a couple of key players at the moment. Dave McGoldrick's retired, so that's one. Aaron Connolly's ruled out through injury and Callum Robinson has tested positive for COVID-19. So, none of those players are available. Dizzy's not available at all anymore. So, I'm going to have to make do with what I got and what we got. So I am going to go and go, I know it's a friendly, but I'm going to go with Darren Randolph and go. I think this is a game where we obviously need to keep in mind the seeding. So I think we have to go with our strongest team that we could probably put out now. We're, we're depleted, aren't we? You can't really catch a break at the moment. But look, Darren Randolph and go, you know what you're going to get with Darren. I'm not going to go too much into what Darren brings. I know he's not playing that much or at all with... West Ham, he was during the last international break, he was at least getting some Carabao Cup games, but that's all kind of gone away now, and he's probably a little bit rusty, having not playing first team football, but he is training with a Premier League club, so we'll give him the benefit of the doubt on this one, but I mean, no other keeper comes close to him in comparison at the moment, at this moment in time, so I'm gone with him, um, Ender Stevens ruled out with a knee injury, so he misses all the games, so I'm going to go with Ryan Manning, who's been called into the squad, he was called into the squad as a, as a replacement for Aaron Connolly and Callum Robinson, one of the two. But has been playing left back for QPR. Got a move to Swansea on deadline day. So he's playing with Swansea. And I suppose now he's probably seen as a left back. So I think he'd be the most natural fit to play at left back if we needed to. I think other solutions could be McLean. But I think Ryan Manning is probably the best fit for this team. Then I'm going to go with John Egan. At centre back, I think you know what you're going to get with John Egan. You know, Premier League, he adapted to it so well. International football, the same. And he's just, he looks like he's been in the Irish team for years. And I know he came quite late into the team. But I think you know what you're going to get with John Egan. I think he's going to battle for absolutely everything. And he'll relish the challenge of coming up against England centre forwards as well. So I think you have to have John Egan in there. And then it was kind of a toss up at the moment between Shane Duffy and Darrow O'Shea. I just think the way Darrow O'Shea played against. Finland was absolutely unbelievable for someone who came in for his first cap. I just thought that he was just excellent and showed again, like I said about John Egan, that he'd been playing at that level his whole career and it was his first ever game for Ireland. Um, just in regards to Shane Duffy, I'm going to go with Shane Duffy just purely down to experience and I would like to see him maybe have a, a cracking game and maybe get a goal because that could change his fortunes then. He's getting a lot of stick off Celtic fans, I know, and he's getting a lot of stick just in general. People question, is he good enough? And I think it's a bit silly to be questioning, is he good enough? I mean, he's proven time and time again, especially for Ireland, that he's well capable at international level. So I'm going to go with Shane Duffy, but he's not going to be my captain because just beside him, I'm going to have Seamus Coleman returning into the starting eleven. I think on form, he's been brilliant for Everton. I watched him closely being an Everton fan and... I think what she, I think we've been missing defensively with Seamus, you know, I don't think Matt Doherty offers what Seamus does defensively, but I think Matt maybe offers more offensively. So for this game, I want to see Seamus Coleman come back in and skip at the team. I just think everything he embodies about himself, the way he handles himself, his standards, I just think he embodies everything an Irish man should be and an Irish player should be. The way he handles everything, just, just everything about him. He's just a class act and, you know, I think it, it, it's shown why he's been playing at the top level for so long and will continue to do so until maybe his legs give way. But I think that's a solid back four and it's a good kind of, and, and keeper, I suppose, back five. It's a good solid base and foundation to, to grow from. Then in midfield, as I sit in midfield, I'm going to have James McCarthy in there. I think Look, he's used to big games. This is going to be a big game. Albeit it's a friendly, this is a big game and you know what you're going to get with him. Uh, he'll sit there, he'll allow the fullbacks to bomb on and he'll cover the spaces. Um, hopefully he'll start getting on the ball and won't let players from the England team dictate. And hopefully he leaves one on, maybe Grealish or the other fella. Um, that'd be nice to see. But I think having him in there, I mean, there is other options. There is Howerton and there is Art, but I think the most natural fit for that position is James McCarthy. So that's why I've got him there. Then just in front of him, I have Jason Malumbi, who I think is going to really thrive in this game if he gets the chance to play. I think this is a game set up for him to... I know I spoke there about Grealish maybe getting a, a flying tackle from McCarthy, but the other fellow might get one from Malumbi, I think. 
and that'd be nice to see if if he does play. I think Malumbi gives us something different. I mean, he's always an option when he gives the ball. He makes himself available for the return ball. He can carry the ball. He gets us up the pitch. When I mean when he when he carries the ball, I mean he gets up the he gets us up the pitch in possession, and you know looks to play in players, which is something that a lot of our midfielders like Hendrick and these players they don't do that. Whereas they look to just play the simple pass. Whereas I think Malumbi has youth on his side, pace and athleticism, as well as a football brain to play that midfield role. I mean, every, every time you look at him, he makes himself available for a pass. And that's something, as I said, a lot of our midfielders don't do. Then I'm going to have another player in there who's quite creative. I'm going to have Robbie Brady playing in midfield, more of an attacking midfielder than anything. I just think if you're looking kind of for creativity, and someone who will hold on to the ball and make other things happen. I think Robbie Brady has that in his locker. I think more so than Howerton. I think Howerton slows down the play a bit. I think Hendrick, he's just not shown enough for me lately to warrant a starting spot. And I think Robbie Brady has that little bit of magic. And I think you have to have one of the two on the field, uh, Brady or Howerton, for set pieces, I think. So for me, I'm going to go with Robbie Brady in there. And it's just purely down for that fact alone I don't think you're really experimenting by putting Robbie in there I think he's played there numerous times for Ireland I know you're probably shoehorning him in and you could probably play him wide but in this instance I just think that you have to you have to have someone creative in there because you know we're depleted as it is and I just think that Hendrick and Howard aren't going to offer enough that Robbie Brady I think will and he'll have legs around him then on the right hand side um, might come as a shock it may not come as a shock. I'm going to go with Matt Doherty on the right-hand side. And just because our attack's been you know, depleted by injuries and COVID and, and other things, that I would like to see maybe... This is the only experiment I would like to see Stephen probably try out, is try Matt and Seamus in the same team. There's absolutely no reason why they can't. I mean, Matt's so good offensively. Seamus is very good defensively. And... There's absolutely no reason why they can't work in cohesion on that right-hand side together. I think if, if it does come off, it could be something that we could look to in the next two or three years to keep on that right-hand side. So that would be my reason for going. There is other players there, yeah, I know, Odauda and, you know, it's, well, there's only really Odauda, isn't there? On the left, I think you have to have them in this team for this particular fixture. Um, <laughs> got sent off against Wales, I know, but James McLean... Uh, I think you have to have him there and I, you look at some of the players who have recently left Ireland to go and play for the other team that I don't think McLean will take that too kindly and I think he'll be flying into challenges if he gets anywhere near those players and he'll be letting them know exactly what we think because I don't think he's held back really uh, especially on, on, on Mr Rice I don't think he's held back on him in recent times uh, on social media so I would like to see him maybe crunch him in a tackle and leave one on him and just let him know that uh, yeah we don't really like him this side of the water but anyway I'll go McLean there because Aaron Connolly probably would have been in the team had he not picked up an injury uh, he would have probably been up there on the left hand side but I'm going to go with McLean I don't think he'll let us down I think he'll do what he needs to do and I think he, uh, you know it'd be great to see him actually get a goal and you know especially around this time it's poppy season it'd be great for him to get a goal and just shut them up because he's sick of listening to them but hopefully he can make a bit of a difference and then lastly up front i probably would have went with callum robinson through the middle he's playing that position for west brom but he's out through co uh, he's ruled out after testing positive with covid so i'm gonna have to go with adam Eda. he's the most closest person in terms of stature we have to David McGoldrick so it's just purely for that reason alone and I think if he can maybe impress in this game it might it might start making Norwich look at him a little bit more and start playing him a little bit more and who knows if he could get his first international goal that would be absolutely brilliant and of course we'd all welcome that we would love to see it so hopefully he can get off the mark and uh, we hopefully Hopefully, fingers crossed, we get a result against the old enemy. Let me know your thoughts on the 11 in the comments. And don't forget to like and subscribe. We're nearly at 9,000 subscribers, so it would really help if you could subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. I'll speak to you soon. Come on, you boys in green.